Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. And uh, if you hadn't noticed, I'm doing a press conference right now. I feel like the President of the United States. I feel so official with this little rig that I've made up to compare four microphones here today. So we're gonna be comparing the Shure SM57 with a Shure SM57 with a transformer removed, so it's a modification, with a Pile PD Mic 78, which is a very, very budget friendly, uh, kind of knockoff version, not kind of knockoff, absolutely a knockoff version of the SM57, but it doesn't have a transformer in it, so how does it compare to the transformerless SM57? And then just for kicks, we're gonna be comparing these with the SM7B, which is kind of the legendary vocal microphone to hear how that sounds. Now in today's video, I'm gonna be comparing all these microphones on my voice, because if we're comparing to the SM7B, it's likely that you're trying to get a podcast microphone or a vocal dynamic microphone that sounds closer to that. Uh, so that's the reason why, even though these three microphones are clearly meant to be instrument microphones, more intended for guitar cabs, snare drums, maybe acoustic guitars, uh, but today we're gonna be testing them all out on voice. Now, a quick disclaimer of how I'm recording all of these. I have all four of these microphones going directly into my Antelope Audio Discrete 4 Synergy Core. I'm recording them all simultaneously into my DAW on my computer, and I'm gonna sync up these files after the fact. Now, these three microphones are going directly into the interface without any external preamps. Now, the Shure SM7B is going through a Clark Technic mic booster, which is kind of like a cloud lifter, although a lot more budget friendly. Look into it. Uh, and that's just to get a little bit more gain before I hit my preamps because otherwise they get a little bit noisy with this microphone in particular. Now on that note, let me tell you where my preamps are set for each of these microphones to get the proper gain to be matched between all of them. Now the power mic is actually the loudest of all four here. So I have that preamp set at plus 36 dB. The original Shure SM57 I have set at plus 38 dB. The modded Shure SM57, once you remove that transformer, it actually removes some gain, so you actually have to uh, crank up your preamp a little bit. And that is at plus 47 dB, so we're kind of getting into the category where you might start getting some noise from your preamp once you do that mod. And lastly, the Shure SM7B is currently set at plus 23 dB. That's only because I have the Clark Technic mic booster in line, which adds another 25 dB. So in my experience, I usually have to run this somewhere in the 57, 58 dB range to get to a kind of good unity uh, level. Now, so far, all the audio you've heard so far is coming from the Rode Video Mic Go 2 that I have boomed just out of frame here. But just like this, we're gonna switch right to the Shure SM57 right now. And so now you are listening to the Shure SM57. I'm about five, six inches away from it, talking directly into the microphone. I have all these roughly the same distance away. Even the SM7B I've kind of set back a little bit so that the capsule lines up pretty well uh, with the other microphones. So this is the Shure SM57, totally unmodified, directly stock, and this is what it sounds like. Now I'm gonna go through all four of these and then I'm gonna change the distance. I'm gonna talk directly into them with adding a windscreen onto each of the SM57 variants so you can hear what that sounds like. So again, this is the unmodified Shure SM57. This is a legendary microphone. It's about $100 and this is what it sounds like. Next, we're gonna switch over to the Shure SM57 that I have modified by removing the transformer. Now you're listening to the Shure SM57, which I modified by removing the transformer inside. Now you may be wondering, why did you move the transformer? Well, this is a very popular modification going back decades that is supposed to kind of remove the mid hump that a lot of people love about the SM57. It's why it works so great on like guitar cabs. But as like a vocal mic, it kind of sounds a little boxy, nasally. And so removing the transformer is supposed to kind of open up the microphone, both on the high end and the low end. At least that's what they say. I'm not sure. This is my first time ever doing it. And I wanted to hear the comparison, which you're hearing right now for the first time. So next, let's jump over to the Pile PD Mic 78. So you're listening now to the Pile PD Mic 78. This microphone right now on Amazon is $26, but I've seen it go as low as $13. So just depends on the day that you're looking. It could go up in price depending on how popular these get. Um, but right now I did buy this for $26, brand new in the box, and threw it into this comparison because I wanted to see how it sounded. Now the grill is kind of the only place where I see a huge difference in that it's a much brighter kind of painted silvery color versus the actual SM57, which is kind of a darker gray. It's also way lighter than the SM57. And I thought a lot of that had to do with the uh, transformer, but it's even lighter than the transformer list uh, modification that I did on the SM57. This is what the PD Mic 78 sounds like. And next we are going to jump over to the SM7B. Now, obviously the SM7B is a $400 microphone. It's a, in a totally different class. It's huge. It has its own pop filter. It's got an internal shock mount. It's on a yoke. Uh, all of those things, the build quality is just exceptional on this microphone, but it's extremely popular with obviously podcasters, streamers, anyone doing kind of spoken word uh, work. 
And so if you don't have the budget for it and you don't want to have to run it through something like a cloud lifter uh, to get it into your system, let's see how they compare with these more budget-friendly options. Okay, so that's the SM7B. Next, what we're going to do is put these pop filters on to make it a little bit closer to the SM7B, and I'll go through each microphone again, and I'm gonna get right into them and just kind of test out the proximity effect with the pop filter attached. All right, so I've raised up the microphones because now we're gonna test the proximity effect of each of these microphones. So I've added the Shure A2WS, which fits, of course, on the 57s, and it will also fit on the Pile PD Mic 78. So just to balance out with the windscreen of the SM7B, I'm adding that in here right now. And so I'm gonna lean right into this microphone. Still not processing the microphones at all, but you're just hearing the raw, unprocessed audio from these microphones. So this is the Shure SM57 with the windscreen on, and this is what it sounds like. Checking one, two, one, two, three, four, and this is what it sounds like. Sure, SM57 with the A2WS, which is a $19 windscreen. Check the description below. Uh, really great addition if you're using these for vocals. Highly recommended. Next, we're going to move the windscreen over to the modified transformer list 57, like that. So now we're on the 57 that I removed the transformer from and I'm leaning right into it. And so this is what the transformerless microphone sounds like when you lean right into it with the windscreen on there. Again, highly recommend the windscreen. Checking one, two, one, two, three. This is the microphone. This is the Shure SM57 with the transformer removed and with the windscreen thrown on. So checking one, two, this is what it sounds like. Next, we're going to move over to the Pile PD Mic 78, right? Now, so now we're on the Pile PD Mic 78, and I'm the same distance away talking into it with the same windscreen. So this is the Pile PD Mic 78, and this is what it sounds like. Checking one, two, one, two, three. Pile PD Mic 78, this is what it sounds like. Pile PD Mic 78, this is what it sounds like with the windscreen attached. It's really nice that the body size of this microphone is the exact same as the SM57 because uh, it allows you to use the same accessories that would work with the 57 on the pile mic, for example, this windscreen. So checking one, two, one, two, and three. Next, let's shift over immediately over to the SM7B, which you're listening to now. I'm the same distance away getting right into this microphone. I'm actually getting a little bit closer to it to actually match the exact distance to the capsules of the others uh, to be the closest comparison that we can get. So this is the SM7B. This is a legendary microphone that you've heard all over town, uh, all over the internet, on um, most places uh, have the SM7B. So this is what this microphone sounds like in this comparison. Again, going through a Clark Technic mic booster uh, and into the Antelope Audio Discrete for Synergy Core. All right, so the next thing I wanna test is how close can I get these relatively cheap microphones to sound like the SM7B with processing. So I'm actually gonna go in, I'm gonna add some compression, I'm gonna add some EQ, and we're gonna see if we can get these to sound a little bit closer to the SM7B or maybe even better. So we're actually gonna go in reverse order right now and I'm gonna start with the Shure SM7B, processed to my liking how I like it. So obviously processing is a very subjective uh, thing, but for my voice right now, this is how I like this microphone about this distance. And this is kind of the gold standard that I'm holding the rest of these to. So I'm going to listen to this when I go back to process these. I'm going to be listening to this microphone quite a bit and then comparing it and trying to get these mics to sound at least as close as possible. There will be some differences still. Obviously, I'm not trying to make it a total duplicate, but how close can I get them in sound to where maybe you don't need to spend $400 a microphone. Maybe you can spend $26 and pick up a $20 microphone, spend less than 50 bucks and be in the same ballpark. We're not sure yet. We're going to go ahead and process them and hear how they sound. So that's the SM7B. We're going to jump between the SM7B and the microphone and then ping back and forth. So you have the SM7B in your ear each time we're transitioning between microphones. So again, this is the SM7B. And now let's jump into the Shure SM57 with no modification. All right. So this is the SM57 with no modification. And this is with the processing on. So I've added a little compression. I've added some EQ, maybe a little de uh, to try to get it closer in sound to the SM7B. So how do you think these compare? Uh, when you're listening to the Shure SM57 versus the SM7B. Let's jump back to it. All right, so that was the Shure SM57. Now we're back on the SM7B just as a palate cleanser, if you will. So you can hear the SM7B again. And next, we're going to jump over to the SM57, this one right here that has the transformer removed. 
All right, so yeah, we're now we're on the SM57 with the transformer remove. So the reason I did the transformer removal is that I heard that it got closer to the SM7B. That's kind of the original reason that I actually started down this whole train to begin with. And so with the windscreen on, with the transformer removed, how close is this to an SM7B? Uh, do you like it better? Do you like it worse? This is the Shure SM57 with the transformer removed and with some processing on it. And we're going to compare that with the SM7B. That was the 57 with the transformer removed. Obviously, I'm recording these out of order, which is why the windscreen has not moved. Uh, so this is the SM7B again. And next, we're going to hear how the PD Mic 78 sounds. Uh, again, a $26 microphone. So let's hear how that sounds. All right, so last one is the Pile PD Mic 78. So this is what this sounds like. I'm getting right into it, and we're going to add the processing, some EQ, some compression, and we're going to hear how that sounds. So this is the Pile PD Mic 78, and this is about as good as I can personally make it sound for my voice. And we're going to listen to that back, and we're going to hear how that sounds. I don't know what else to say. I probably should have read something instead of just constantly saying over and over, we're going to listen to it, and then we're going to check it out, and then we're going to listen to it, and then we're going to check it out again, and then we're going to check it out, and then check out this one, check it out, check it out. So this is the PD Mic 78. Again, it's a $26 microphone with a $19 windscreen attached and going straight into the Antelope Audio Discrete for Synergy Core. So this is what that sounds like. And we're back on the SM7B again. So now I'm going to stop. I'm going to go ahead and process these. I'm going to listen to them a bunch, and I'm going to come back, and we're going to do our conclusion. All right, so what'd you think? Let me know in the comments below which one of these three mics was your favorite and which one of these do you think sounded most like the SM7B? Now, listening back, I do think I still like the SM7B the best of all of these. It kind of makes sense. I mean, it's a $400 microphone. It's four times the price of these and 15 times the price of the pile. And so for that, in terms of what is the best value, I mean, I think all of these work really, really tremendously well. And if you cater them to your voice and you get to add a little bit of processing and some EQ, I think any of these can work. I am significantly impressed with the Powell PD Mic 78 and the sounds that we're able to get out of this. It's got the most kind of high-end trebly sound and almost like right out of the box, the most kind of processed radio sound, uh, kind of the curve sound where you get a lot of low end and a lot of high end. For a lot of applications, like if I was gonna use it for like a guitar, one of the reasons I like a 57 is a little flatter. It's got a little bit of that mid-notch, but it's mostly a flat microphone. This microphone doesn't really do that. So as much as it's a clone visually to the 57, it, from a sound standpoint, especially on voice, I, I don't see that. Uh, I see it being very different, but processed and EQ'd, it gets in the same ballpark as them, absolutely. So you can do the same things, I think, with the PD Mic 78. Um, but overall, just right out of the gate, without processing, you might actually prefer that sound uh, over 57, potentially. Uh, next up, between the 57s, I do think that the Transformerless 57 does open it up just enough. It's pretty subtle uh, to me, the modification. Like, I was expecting a lot more uh, than what we actually got when we actually when I started listening to the clips. Um, but I do feel like it got rid of that kind of mid hump that I really don't like about my voice. I have a, a pretty nasally voice, I think. So a uh, 57 usually doesn't work very well for me. I, I don't prefer it on my voice. Um, and honestly, the SM7B does kind of the same thing, but we'll come back to it. But that transformer list, it does open it up and kind of mellow out that mid notch. It gives it a little bit more low end extension. It gives it a little more high end. Um, but it, again, it's very subtle, um, but I did like it uh, probably the best of these three. Uh, especially when comparing it to the SM7B, I think it got the closest. And then the SM57 is a tried and true classic. Like I said, it's got that mid notch that I personally don't like. So that's a bias that I have, um, but hopefully this test was helpful for you. All right, so that's it for this video. If it was helpful for you, I'd really appreciate it if you can subscribe to the channel and hit that like button and we'll see you on the next one.